Hey, what's up, everybody? I know normally I don't read, uh, do reviews of television shows, but I figured, I guess this time around, I'd make an exception. And I figured the one in particular that I thought would be interesting to talk about for the Cobra Kai fans and Karate Kid fans, of course, is Cobra Kai uh, Season 5. And I will say it's a pretty interesting, you know, season like all the other previous four seasons. And uh, season five picks up where uh, season four uh, left off with Miguel uh, traveling uh, to Mexico to find out who his father is. I guess to know more about, I guess, himself and his heritage, even despite his mother, Carmen's warning that, you know, Miguel's uh, biological father was not a very honorable man or a decent person, which, of course, as Miguel does find out, that unfortunately turns out to be true. And, you know, of course, his father. You know, turns out to be you know a criminal lord of a criminal of sorts from Ecuador, uh, and seems to you know have hatred towards women and kids, and of course you know he doesn't find out that uh, Hector doesn't find out that Miguel's this biological you know you know son. Maybe that's a storyline that might uh, be picked up in season six. And then, of course, you know, Johnny, Lawrence, and, you know, his son, Robbie, you know, now that they're finally made events after the events of season four, you know, try to go to, you know, to Miguel to get, I mean, to Mexico to get Miguel back. And then, of course, there's, you know, the fallout from the Miyagi dope, you know, uh, you know they lost to the Cobra Kai, even though, of course, it was revealed that, you know, Terry Silver, you know, Chris's uh, Viet North uh, Vietnam companion was the one that cheated and by paying off a referee and of course you know Tori Nichols you know Samantha Russo um, the daughter of you know Daniel LaRusso of course you know Tori is you know I would say rightfully pissed off when she found out that her win was based you know off a lion of course she tries to you know make amends and then she like Robbie and Eva you know Kay Hawk realized how Corrupting the power of Cobra Kai truly is, and of course, you know, you know other aspects. You know, of the storyline also deals with like, you know, Kenny Payne, the younger brother of, uh, you know, Sean Payne, who Robbie encountered in Juvie in the third season. You know, in a sense, kind of becomes what Eli used to be. You know, being going from the one that was bullied to being the one that is the bully, like, like, you know, from the hunt, from the hunted to the hunter. You know. Kind of like it kind of the, the best way to describe that particular storyline is kind of like you know what happened to Anakin Skywalker you know Revenge of the Sith in which you know you know was once a decent person but then got corrupted by power and you know the same thing kind of also happened you know to Fate's character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer so even though in that particular case it was because of a you know an unfortunate accident that happened that caused her to you know lose her way and turn to evil even though of course eventually fate would eventually find her redemption and you know it's kind of nice to see you know the characters like Eli and you know Robbie who used to be on Cobra Kai you know you know they were lucky to get themselves out of it before it got to the point of you know no return and of course you know Ro Robbie tries to you know I guess in a sense break through to Tori and Kenny to get out while they can and of course you know you know the feud between you know Robbie and Miguel also finally comes to a head after this season and it's it has like a nice resolution to it and of course you know it also brings back you know characters from the Karate Kid 3 including the long-awaited return of Mike Barnes and of course you know Jessica you know Daniel's you know friend you know and a, and a pretty nice twist about it that it has like uh you know she actually turns out to be the cousin of you know of his wife Amanda, which I thought was a nice way to bring her back into the story without being forced, which I thought was uh, pretty cool. Um, if there's maybe a few minor complaints I had about the fifth season, like how they kind of reduced, you know, Eli's friend Dimitri to kind of a recurring character, you know, this season. But in a sense, it's kind of understandable only because, you know, his story and Eli's kind of felt mostly fulfilled in the fourth season, and even though it's nice to have him in it. You know for whatever scenes he had but it would have been nice to see more scenes with you know Dimitri and Yasmin see how their relationship progressed and also you know seeing how you know there could be like a potential friendship with Dimitri and Ravi like there was you know like what happens to Miguel 
and Robbie this season, unless maybe season six uh, will touch into that. And of course, it also this season also introduces the idea of this global tournament, which you know happens overseas. Which I have a feeling is probably going to be like uh, a major turning, uh, going to be a major plot point for the sixth season. And of course, hopefully. You know, season six will finally bring back characters from the next Karate Kid, which was the only one not to feature uh, Daniel Lewis's character. So hopefully, Julie Pierce will probably make her long-awaited uh, return, and maybe they might, you know, have the Jerry Parker and Mr. Han from the re from the Karate Kid uh, reboot maybe appear in this uh, story somehow, if there's a logical uh, way to do so. So overall, I would have to say the fifth season, like. You know, all the previous four, four were actually pretty, you know, good and gave, you know, fans what they want and a bit more focus on the adults as, you know, chosen, you know, Daniel's rival from Karate Kid Part 2, now his friend, you know, has some interesting storylines that's probably one of the funnier aspects of the season. So that's my take on that. So that's it. All right, everyone. Thanks again.